Hello, I'm back, and now I'm going to do the presentation uh, with the uh, switch. This is the magnetic to scalar uh, switch, and it's going to work a little bit differently. I'm going to introduce, which you already know about, is uh, the Spooky Boost cable. They make Spooky Boost in several different ways. Let me just get this over here. You could conceivably have one of these adapters. And there's a couple of versions of these adapters. This is a spooky boost also. we get it in front of the camera. Or you could have the coil. And I'm going to use the coil. Or, or the wire, not the coil. I meant to say wire. I'm going to use the wire. I'm going to unravel it. And what it is, it's uh, two BNC connectors with one output. And they're connected in such a way that they combine the output of two uh, channels of the spooky. I'll put this aside and I'm going to disconnect from the last video and connect up this switch. So I'm taking off channel 2, this adapter cable that we will no longer be using. I keep things in front of the camera. Okay, we won't be using this. I'll put this off to the side and I'm going to disconnect channel 1. which had this adapter put on here. And I'm not going to use that either. But I'm going to need something to get that into the uh, switch. That connector right there into the switch. And there is a cable that comes with that. And I have it all bound up. Should have uh, unbound it so this will go a little quicker. And here is the cable. And basically what it is, it's, it's an extension cord cable. Put this one down. With two male plugs. I'm going to get in front of the camera. With two male plugs. An extension cord with two male plugs. One plug. Doesn't matter which one. These plugs are polarized. They have a ground and a hot lead. And you can only plug it one way. Plugs into channel two. And the other coil plugs into, doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll put it down in the lower into the spooky, um, not spooky, the switch box. And that is polarized. This is polarized. And I've got one channel connected from the coil into the switch. The primary, the one that's got a cord already on it, th there's the power right there. And I'm going to put that into the switch. It can only go one way. Okay. Now I have, I'm going to take this elastic off, on the switch, I have a um, cable uh, connector that was meant to originally plug into the um, PEMF, but with this adapter, I'm going to bring this adapter back, it'll give me a phono that will plug into the spooky. And I'll put this down momentarily. And I need to connect up the spooky boost. Now, I don't have to use a spooky boost. I can just use a single channel out of the spooky channel one or channel two. But the spooky boost will give me twice as much power because it'll combine two channels. And Hence, it's your choice. There's reasons why you would not want to use a spooky boost, and there's reasons why. Um, you don't always need to pass as much uh, voltage as possible through this coil. Um, there's a general rule, uh, especially in the health modality industry, more power is not always better. More power can be overpowering um, something that you don't need to be overpowered. So... There's one reason why you might not want to use a spooky boost. You might stick with a single uh, channel. At any rate, we're going to disconnect all these gizmos, all these adapters. And, we'll, and we're going to reconnect things a little bit. Red is channel one if I can do this properly. 
Okay, and I'm, I'm going to need a pick tail so I can do some scoping, but I don't need it there. Mistake. I don't need it there. I can just do this. Sorry for being a little bit slow on this. Boom. Boom. I just connected the Spooky Boost to the Spooky. What I do need is to be able to do a pigtail so I can monitor with my scope everything that I want to monitor. Okay, now I need to get this end of the spooky. This is just a uh, duplicate pigtail. I'm going to be able to monitor it with the scope. I want to get this end um, into this coil. And if I go back to, here we go, <laughs> too many wires here. Go back to my adapter, and this adapter comes off the spooky switch. Okay, well, I'm going to back up one more time. Channel 2 going into the switch from the coil, or coil 2, the 18-gauge. Um, the 12-gauge going into the coil, and the switch has an output that has to connect to the spooky. And I need one of these... Uh, RCA to BNCs, put that all together, and voila, I'm all connected. So now I have the spooky going through a spooky boost and going into the coil. Whoops. Redo that. Sorry, I pulled it apart. Going into the coil via the switch. All right, so I'm going to put this up here on the side. I know it looks like a lot of wires dangling, but I hope I was clear on that. I'm going to connect up the scope and um, make sure everything works and I'll pick up the video. All right, we're back and we have the magnetic to scalar switch um, all set up and the scope probes on and so forth. So the first thing I want to just reiterate is, is that I've got one wire of the coil or one, one coil in this bi filler going to one plug. It really doesn't matter which one. And I have the other wire coming out of the coil going into the other plug within the um, magnetic to scalar switch. The output or the input to the magnetic scalar switch is this cable right here that I'm holding in my left hand and it goes into the spooky through the spooky boost. I have a scope probe monitoring the spooky boost output and I have my sensing coil put in here on channel 2 so I can watch both channels at the same time. Presently I have the magnetic switch in the off uh, magnetic scalar switch in the off position which is in the middle position. So if I turn this switch into the magnetic position, channel 2 will receive magnetic waves from this coil, um, not channel 2, excuse me, <laughs> this coil here, the sensing coil will receive magnetic waves from the bifiller coil, and we will see uh, a wave pattern on channel 2. And there it is. Now, there's a phase shift as a result of the coupling, and that's not relevant to what I'm trying to talk about. Because what I'm talking about is that we have a magnetic pulse being received, or a wave, not a pulse, but a magnetic wave being received by this receiving coil. And the reason why it's not as big as the output of the spooky directly uh, the output of the spooky directly is 40 volts peak to peak, is because this coupling coil is so small in relation to the um, bifiller, it's not really receiving the full signal. Uh, the full signal is radiating outward, outward, if I can get my hands over, outward up into my ceiling or into space. And if I had a bigger sensing coil, I would get equal wave patterns. But I don't. I just got this little guy here. Now, that's the magnetic position. So if I take the switch, get my hands so the camera can see, and put it in the middle, of course, that second channel will go to zero. 
And if I put it in the scalar position, which is down towards this cable, oh, look at that. I get pretty much a straight line. I can see these little tiny junctions where the nodes were crossing um, on the yellow. And more significant is that if I turn it off and then turn it on, you'll notice that the spooky gets loaded down a little bit. And that is because I have a larger voltage coming out of the bifiller going through my little connector cable. And this connector cable has a 33, um, 330-ohm resistor built into the circuit, which helps the um, spooky not see a short of just wires shorting right across the terminal. But this connector coil here was designed to go across a single channel, and now it's and handle only 20 volts. Now it's handling 40 volts, so it loads down the spooky an ever so little. But what does that mean? It means that there's more power going to the coil, being transferred to the coil. Let me explain a couple of things. I'll hold the switch in my hand. You'll notice that there's these terminals up here, and these terminals right now just have a bare copper wire shunning across the two of them. That copper wire can be removed, and I think I have one here. Yes, I do. I have a 300, uh, get it in front of the camera, 330 ohm resistor, and I could put that there, and that would be a less load factor on the spooky. Uh, but as it is now, it is fine. It is fine. It's working beautifully. Or the switch can be used for really high voltage uh, um, tra uh, transformations. You know, 160, 100, you know, something out of the frequency converter, which I did a video on before. Um, when I was, uh, I did a video um, on the magnetic bifiller coil. It was a little three inch coil, small one. And I don't make that coil anymore. But that video is very appropriate. It showed how I used the frequency converter um, to generate really large magnetic pulses. Huge. Um, and what I would put in here is a 2K 10 watt resistor to limit the power so I didn't smoke the coil and burn up the wires and everything else. But for most, 99% of the people who use this magnetic switch, they're going to be using it with a spooky, possibly a little mini amplifier. Uh, there are many out there on the market that can double the uh, power of the, or triple or quad the uh, power of the spooky uh, output. But they won't be doing 110 volts, <laughs> okay, or 160 volts that comes out of the uh, frequency converter. So I'm going to reiterate, when the switch is in the middle position, it's in the off. When it's in the up position towards these poles that have the bare wire, uh, have a wire across, it's in the magnetic position. And when it's all the way down, it's in the scalar position. Now there's energy going out to the coil from the spooky. You can see the spooky still connected. You can see the sine wave. And it's going through the switch into the coil. But because they're opposing... Um, fields, they cancel out, generating your, what I call, standing wave, or what is called a standing wave, and that is the essence of the scalar wave, the standing wave. And of course, I could put my fingernail in there, uh, clipping, instead of the sensing coils that I'm using to demonstrate this phenomenon, or not phenomenon, this um, ability of uh, the bifiller generating either a magnetic wave or a scalar wave. It's not a phenomenon. It's a capability. All right, so that's my presentation, and I'm sticking to it. I have one last thing to point out. When you use the uh, Spooky Boost, you create the largest signal by using inverted sync. Um, and it will create the largest output the way this is wired. Keep that in mind. Email me if you get confused or you want a restatement of that fact. Know how your spooky works. Know how your, um, whether you use the circuit board, wherever I put that, 
whether you use a circuit board version, they have two versions of these, uh, maybe even more now, um, of the Spooky Boost, or whether you use the Spooky Boost cable, which was one of the original designs that they were selling with the Spooky. Know your equipment, and then you can learn how to adapt that equipment to accessories like this. This is a delivery device. This is a tool to help control the delivery device, and here is a function generator. Marry them all together, and you have a, a Rife system um, generating magnetic waves or scalar waves versus uh, an electric field. But, of course, we always have the plasma ball for generating electric fields. Uh, this one's being mo in, in modification. That's why there's no guts in it right now. Um, but <laughs> So you have a nice and very powerful uh, economically priced um, uh, delivery device, magnetic or scalar weight delivery device. And it's uh, extremely, uh, a lot more powerful than the um, Spokey Remote. But the Spokey Remote has its, um, its positives too. It's small and it's compact and, uh, and it works. A lot of people claim that they've had miraculous results with it. Um, and again, like I said, power is not always the essence of success. Uh, sometimes too much power can actually be damaging. All right, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it, and I hope this video uh, worked for you. Thank you very much.